All right, give me a moment here. Oh, shit. Hey everyone, welcome back. Today, I wanna show you that I got really lucky. Oh, Jesus. I found two of these uh, batteries they are uh, AGM absorbed glass mat uh, lead acid 12 volt batteries. I found two of them in the trash. Uh, here in Ontario, you're supposed to bring these guys back for recycling. I saw them in the trash and these are like, these are high spec, very expensive um, UPS batteries, un uninterruptible power supplies. Um, I looked them up online. They are uh, meant to be used in uh, data centers, uh, telcos, or whatever. They, they'll have a bank of these batteries. Um, I'm not sure why these were thrown away, but I did throw them on a trickle charger, and they charged up no problem. In fact, this was about, uh, oh, three, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. And right now, they still have a fully charged lead acid battery is 12.6 volts. So 12.76, so it is still fully charged. Um, so yeah, these batteries are uh, at least a couple hundred dollars each. The only way to know if they're still in good shape though is to discharge them. And with this rating here, uh, somewhere between uh, 93 amp hours and 87 amp hours depends where you cut off your your charge if we're anywhere near that we're in good shape uh, and so two of these batteries the plan would be to use these as a solar energy reservoir I have a couple of solar panels here um, it's gonna take a long time especially we're going into winter pretty soon it'll take a long time for those solar panels to fill this up uh, but I can start my uh, testing to see if it's viable to run my channel on all solar. I might need more panels, but uh, who knows? Maybe there'll be more sponsorship available for that in the future. For now, I've got panels. I've got MPPT controllers, two of them in fact, a big one and a small one. Might as well put this to good use if I can. Uh, you know, 200-ish amp amp hours is no laughing matter. However, the only discharger I have is this one here. This one maxes out at 150 watts. And uh, this thing, it can, you know, if it has a capacity of 93 amp hours, um, it'll take 10 hours to discharge at, uh, you know, nine amps, which is approximately what it can do very easily. So I'm gonna set this up under my new workbench over there. I'll bring you guys there and we'll start draining it from there so I can still use my workbench in the remaining 10 hours. And also it'll be 20 hours because I'm going to test both batteries. A um, couple of little uh, specs just to show you how hardcore these things are. These things each weigh uh, 65 pounds. That's 30 and a half kilos for um, the uh, non-continental types. Uh, max discharge 800 amps continuous, which is a lot of discharge current. I'm probably going to be discharging, you know, fives of amps at the max. There's a short circuit current, um, you know, one of these things, just a pulse, uh, 4,200 amps. Um, it's supposed to last 10 years. And if I look on the badge, it looks like it was built in uh, 2018. So still a lot of years left. I don't know why these were thrown out yet. Maybe they have no capacity left. I don't know, I haven't tried them yet. Um, and also the casement is thermally welded so that it should never leak. It's designed not to ever leak. So even though it might leak internally, uh, these little plugs come out, even though it might leak internally, uh, even though it shouldn't, it's just an emergency, uh, it'll be caught by the casement and never spill on the floor, which is kind of what you want for a residential. Eventually, if these are good, these two batteries are going to go into my workshop, which I plan on remodeling over the course of winter. So I could do much bigger projects, you know, have a lot more headspace and the camera mounted a little bit higher up 
in a better position for that. Um, and so it'll be part of there. I'll run wires to outside where I'm going to have the solar panels. So before we go head out underneath the uh, workbench, I did make up some uh, wires here. So these are some ring terminals that I crimped on and these are some fork terminals uh, that also crimped on and um, the ring terminals will go onto here. The fork terminals will fit into here. I'll have less to explain once I get there and then th this will be plugged in and be draining these batteries one at a time and you're not going to have to watch that. I'll just bring you back when I have the results. All right, um, a whole bunch of charge discharge and uh, one dead power supply later. Don't worry, it is not the Reden RD6018. It's actually uh, one that uh, Kai Wheats sent me for free. Uh, yeah, I didn't, it didn't survive. I told them about it and they said they're working on it. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, so, uh, I labeled the batteries one and two. This is number two. This is my worst one. Uh, number one got an 83 amp hour discharge uh, down to the uh, 1.75 volts per cell rate which should have been 93 so it is degraded um, then it charged up with 84 amp hours um, I discharged them at I tried to do about a hundred watts but it's not I don't have a constant power uh, electronic load I have a constant current electronic load and as the voltage goes down because power is actually just current multiplied by voltage, uh, the power went down. So I had to keep bumping it up a little bit and try to keep it around around 100 watts. Um, yeah, and I charge it up at uh, 15 amps. So it still took quite a while to charge. I mean, these, these are big batteries. They have a lot of uh, juice in them. The second one, though, this one here, uh, did not fare so well. It did a 68 and a half amp hour discharge and uh, it did 68.9 amp hour charge. Uh, I charged this one at five amps. Now, these batteries have been sitting for quite a while. They've been doing nothing. That's what I assume because these terminals uh, really are in good shape. Uh, the batteries still had a, a relatively decent float charge when I picked them up from the trash. Um, I feel as though these batteries were not really put through a hard life. That's just my my gut feeling. They have a um, manufacturer date of 2018. I believe that's a manufacturer date. And so I think I'm going to contact the company and see if uh, they'll warranty these batteries. Who knows? Uh, these are commercial batteries, so typically they have pretty good warranties. Uh, I'll just, you know, I'll drop them an email and see what happens. But in the meantime, I think if I put them in service, you know, give them a lot of charge discharge cycles, I feel like they might recover because um, there's a phenomenon in lead acid batteries where the uh, sulfur, which is in the sulfuric acid in these batteries, the sulfur precipitates out onto the uh, plates the electrodes and when you charge them it's supposed to, to, to you know return into solution but sometimes if they sit for a while or they get over discharged uh, for a long time uh, the sulfur binds with those electrodes it's called uh, you know plate sulfation there are intelligent chargers that will pulse um, charge into them to try to like blow out the the sulfur so the sulfur can redissolve in the liquid so uh, I think just regular use might recover these things, but either way, it doesn't matter. All I care about is energy and not energy density because this is just going into the uh, dirty workshop that way. Um, you know, uh, it, it doesn't take up all that much space. There'll be a nice shelf for them and uh, yeah, they'll be part of a full system. I'm also gonna wire these batteries in parallel with each other. And so uh, don't worry, yes, that's totally legit. You can put two batteries of diff different capacities. They will balance each other out because basically what happens is the stronger battery will keep the voltage up on the, on the weaker battery. You might lose very little bit of the total capacity of the two batteries, but I'd rather have them both in service than, you know, have to go manually switch them on and off. 
So, in the upcoming little while, you'll see me tinkering with these. I'm going to make uh, some nice terminals for these. I want to protect, probably put terminal covers as well, so you know nothing will short across these uh, because they do have that big burst of uh, current that they're capable of delivering, which will probably damage them. And um, I need to set up some sort of um, solar power to keep these things topped up. And I'm going to start using them in the workshop here, or at least the electricity from them in the workshop here. So probably my patrons are going to see these projects first because I consider these to be uh, infrastructure projects. So uh, usually my patrons get about a month advance on infrastructure projects. Uh, so if you want to see them uh, in time or early, uh, make sure you're subscribed. Also, if I'm not mistaken, because the community communication can be a little a little iffy from time to time. I believe Banggood is sending me a better load tester. Um, better hopefully software wise, but especially um, watts wise. I think the one I have has a maximum of 150 watts and the one they're sending me, I'll put a link in the description if you want to just get a head start and, and buy one, but um, the one they're sending me should go up to 600 watts. So we can put some some more stuff into some more uh, serious testing. So you got any questions, put them down in the comments below. I will try to answer them. I try to answer every single comment aside from the ones where I really don't know what you're talking about. Thanks for watching.